He said in the garage that you will not raise my children on your own. You have become my enemy, and as my enemy, I will kill you. I knew he was going to kill me, and I knew it was going to be a headshot. New and terrifying insight into the mind of the D.C. sniper. John Allen Muhammad's brave ex-wife is my very special guest tonight. Of course, this guy brutally terrorized her and kidnapped their kids long before he terrorized an entire city. You remember, it was the fall of 2002. Muhammad and his young sidekick, Lee Boyd Malvo, went on a murderous rampage in the Washington, D.C. area. They randomly picked off strangers, just picked them off, shooting them from afar with high-powered rifles. Innocent people just going about their day, just plucked off, gunned down by a single bullet from a high-powered assault rifle. Muhammad and Malvo were captured three weeks into their really horrific killing spree that left at least 10 people dead. Malvo, the young one, got life in prison. Muhammad got the death penalty and was executed. The execution of John Allen Muhammad has been carried out under the laws of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Mildred Muhammad reveals she, this is a shocker, she was the ultimate target of her ex-husband's twisted killing spree. So how close did she come to being the 11th sniper victim? I am honored to welcome Mildred Muhammad, and she is not only a domestic abuse survivor, she is the author of Scared Silent, and she works so much to try to get the truth about domestic violence out there. Uh, take us back, Mildred, to the moment when you found out that your ex-husband, who you had three children with, was arrested as the D.C. sniper, a serial killer. Well, ATF knocked on my door on the 23rd of October, took me down to the police station and began asking me questions of when was the last time I had seen John. I told them that it was at an emergency custody hearing, which was September 5th, 2001. Well, it was at that time where they told me, well, Ms. Muhammad, we're just going to have to tell you. We're going to name your ex-husband as the sniper. And I said, what? They said, yes, we're going to name your, your ex-husband as the sniper. Did you think he would do anything like this? I said, well, I don't, uh, uh, yeah. And they said, well, why would you think that? I said, because he said while we were watching a movie, I don't remember the name of it. He said, I could take a small city, terrorize it. They would think it would be a group of people and it would only be me. I said, well, why would you do something like that? He changed the subject. And it was at that point that the police asked me, didn't I know that I was the target? And I said, well, how would I know that if I don't know my way around? So they informed me that I was the target of the shootings. So the idea was that he would kill all these people and then you would be the penultimate victim. And right. then you would die and he would rush in there as the grieving ex-husband and get the kids, your three kids. Was that all part of his plan to get these kids back that uh, you had gotten custody of? Yes, ma'am. That was the ultimate purpose for what he had done. Unbelievable. Okay, so uh, your ex-husband. Okay, let's let's do a little backstory on him. He okay. got an expert rifleman's badge during his years in the army. That's where he learned to shoot. Uh, yes, obviously, that's a skill that played a role in his killing spree years later. He was a sergeant in the first Gulf War. You have said that when he returned from the war, he was a totally different man. That he mm -hmm. suffered from post-traumatic stress syndrome. Um, was he abusive to you before going off to war and it just got worse after the war? Or was he basically a nice guy before he went off to the war and then came back completely changed and, and abusive, violent? Well, basically, he was a good guy before he left. He was the life of the party. Everybody wanted to be around him. However, when he returned from the Gulf War, he was a different person. As many soldiers that come from a war zone are different people. He was diagnosed with PTSD. However, he was not debriefed, nor was he counseled for this diagnosis. We have to also pay attention to the soldiers that are coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq and the spouses because there's a lot of domestic violence in the military community that needs to be addressed as well. Now, here's what I want to ask you. Apparently, the abuse began. So first of all, tell me some of the things that he did before he became a serial killer to abuse you after he got back from the war. Well, John's abuse was mostly verbal. 
and it wasn't that he was yelling. He just made me feel that I wasn't a good mother, I wasn't a good cook. Things that I enjoyed, he belittled. I had my favorite clothing and he would throw them away. Certain things that I made a big deal about, he minimized them to make it appear that they wasn't really anything at all. We have to understand that 80% of domestic violence, the victims and survivors do not have physical scars. So there's 80% of people walking around emotionally damaged. And although statistics state that every nine to 15 seconds a woman is abused, I'm trying to shift the thinking of society to go back to the number one, because the number one starts with a verbal assault. After the verbal assault, then it escalates into a physical assault, which leads to mutilation and then death. Okay, so we have to me, learn how to talk to each other. Let me ask you this. I understand at one point he kidnapped your children when you were trying to get away from him. He kidnapped the children you both had. Uh, why wasn't he prosecuted for kidnapping? Because if he was prosecuted, he'd be in jail and he wouldn't be the sniper. Well, number one, it was considered custodial interference. We did not have a parenting plan. He took the children in that, in that window of opportunity that we call it, and so he was not charged with kidnapping. They said he had as much a right to the children as I did. Well, Mildred, we have to leave it right there. I hope you come back and be part of our regular panel as we stay on top of this issue of domestic violence against women. You are a hero.